Hi, my name is Lisa and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make some high-waisted cargo pants. It's so much easier than it looks, especially since I did most of the work for you and all you have to do is follow along. The pattern is available on my Etsy store. We will start by taking measurements of our hips. This is going to be the widest part of your bottom. The tape should be parallel to the floor for the most accurate measurements. Following the size guide, choose a size that matches your hips the best. Go up a size if you are in between sizes because really you want your cargo pants to fit looser. You will also need to measure your in seam which is the inside length of your leg minus 29 inches with seam allowance and I'm 5'3". For material use any woven fabric that you like. I got my fabric from the suiting section of Joann's for only $10. I use the same fabric for the facing and lining. So you're going to place a pattern on grain of the fabric and cut it out. There's going to be a lot of pieces. So in order to keep track of everything, just make sure your pattern pieces are still pinned to your fabric pieces so there's no confusion. So we're actually going to be starting out with the back pocket. You should have cut four of the back pocket flaps as well as interfacing if you wanted to make the flaps a bit stiffer. The rough side of the interfacing is the glue part that will melt and adhere to the fabric. Make sure that it is in the correct position with the rough side facing the fabric so you don't get glue on your iron. And then you're just going to trim the inner facing to match. I decided that my fabric was thick enough so you'll notice later on that I do not interface any of my other pocket flaps. This is kind of up to you but also it's just a little bit too much work for me. Okay so now we're going to sew the pocket flaps right sides together around the three edges. We are leaving the top open so we can turn it inside out and we're just going to pivot around those corners when we're straight stitching. Don't forget to clip the corners at a 45 degree angle so that the corners can turn out smoother. And if that still doesn't work, just use your scissors to push out the corners if needed. Then we're going to top stitch 3 8 inch away from the edge. For some reason on the back pocket only top stitched once, but if you want it to look like the rest of the flaps, top stitch it twice. And then we're just going to serge that raw edge. We're also going to serge the back pocket and then we're going to fold over the top of that back pocket and top stitch 3 8 inch away from the top. Then we're going to refer back to our back pant pattern to determine the location of that back pocket and we're just going to transfer those measurements over with chalk and then use that chalk outline as a reference point to lay down our flap. So for the flap we're going to turn under that raw edge 3 8 of an inch and then top stitch it down to the back pant lip. Next, we're going to mark the middle point of the flap as well as the middle point of the back pocket and one inch down from the flap. This is going to be the location of our back pocket, which we're just going to top stitch all around down, of course, avoiding the top, which is going to be the opening of our pocket. Next, we're going to do our front pockets. We're going to do the exact same thing for the front pocket flap that we did for the back pocket flap. We're going to sew right sides together all around, clip at the corners at a 45 degree angles and turn it inside out. We are going to go to the ironing board just so we can press it out so we have a nice clean crisp flap and we're going to resurge that raw edge and then top stitch it twice around the outer edges. I just thought this would be a little cool detail to have for my cargo pants that would differentiate it from all the standard ones and I honestly saw Bella Hadid wearing a similar pair and so that's how we're doing these front pocket detailings. So for the front pocket you actually have two pieces for the pocket the top and the bottom. So we're going to sew this front pocket flap to the top pocket and we're going to do it with wrong sides together because what we want to do is essentially uh, sandwich the seam allowance between the flap and the top pocket. Then we're just going to top stitch that down. Here's where I definitely messed up because I completely disregarded the front pocket bottom and I moved on to the next step. So if you just want to also disregard the front pocket bottom bag, just go ahead and move on or this is the correct way to do it. And the only difference between doing it this way and the way that I did it is that there's an extra layer to the front pocket so like the front pocket would have th three layers instead of the two layers I did. So if you do want that third layer this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna serge the front pocket top with a finished uh, flap to the front pocket bottom all the way around and you're gonna fold under the edges and top stitch that to the front panel on the right and bottom edge and then you're gonna sew the side seam of the pant leg making sure sure you catch the front pocket in that side seam. If you didn't want to sew your front pocket into the side seam, what you're going to do is just sew together the side seam of your pant leg on both legs and then serge the raw edge and press it open. You're going to press the seam allowance towards the back. 
and then you're gonna take that finished front pocket with that flap and top stitch it down to the pant leg by folding under that raw edge and then pin. so this color sheen that you see on my flap is actually because I set the iron setting too high and it burnt my fabric so definitely check your setting before you're ironing anything so we're just gonna top stitch that front pocket all around twice three eighths of an inch away from the edge and then one eighth inch away you should have two front pant legs sewn together just as the side because now we're gonna move on to the side pockets so what we're gonna do is take the side pocket as well as the side pocket expansion and match it up to that side pocket then we're with right sides together we're gonna sew it all around going carefully around the corners you might have to fold it at the corners for it to match so you're gonna sew around the pocket with the pocket expansion for both pocket bags and you're gonna turn it inside out and at a 90 degree angle on grain to the corners you're just gonna sew a small line and this just helps bring out those corners in the pocket because for the side pockets we can't we don't want them flat to the leg we want them um, to have some width to them and some dimensions and this expansion will help with that and after you are done sewing your corners you're gonna serge all the raw edges and press out those seams I like to iron with a bit of steam just to help bring out that definition but again this really does depend on the type of fabric you're working with for cotton and wovens it's definitely fine to use steam but for anything lighter weight it might melt the fabric then with the seam allowance press towards the side pocket expansion we're just gonna top stitch that down all around then we are back with the side pocket flaps again the same thing you've been doing for every pocket flap right sides together sew it all the way around turn it right side out and search the raw edges then we're just gonna take our side pocket bag and find the center points for the top and bottom which I'm just gonna mark with a pin on your pant pattern there is a notch on the side seam of where your uh, side pocket placement should be but for me I'm just gonna mark it two inch under the back pocket just because I felt like that looked better for my legs so I'm gonna mark two inches down fold under that raw edge of the flap and and then top stitch it down. The center of the flap should line up to the side seam of the pants and then we're just gonna mark one inch below the flap and again we want to line up that middle point of the side pocket to the side seam. This side pocket does have that expansion but the expansion is folded under the side pocket and then we are going to also fold under the raw edges and we're gonna be top stitching the raw edges. So from a top view, you shouldn't be able to see the expansion at all because it folds like an accordion underneath that side pot. So as you can see, I have it pinned all the way around just to help me with this because the concept is going to be a little bit strange at first, but you can actually already see the line of the expansion of how it folds in half to be hidden underneath that side pocket. So we're just going to go ahead and stitch all the way around that side pocket but pat yourself on the back because these are the blast pockets you're gonna be making for these pans. Total, you knocked out six pockets with the flaps. It's actually really crazy when you think about how many pockets there are on cargo pants and that actually means you had to sew every single one of them. So once you finish sewing all around that side pocket, we're actually gonna backstitch at the top of the pocket just so that it can hold its shape and you wanna have that fold under and then backstitch across the top. And we're officially done with the pockets. Now we're gonna move on to the front fly of the pant. So for some reason, I did not have an exposed zipper. So I actually tried it with an invisible zipper just to see if I could. And honestly, it made no difference. So we are gonna take the right front pant leg and then the zipper guard, fold that zipper guard in half and serge that raw edge as well as the front crotch. And what we ideally would like to do is sandwich the zipper between the zipper guard and that front crotch. And again, we're working with the right side. We're gonna take that seam allowance and press it towards the right front pant leg and top stitch it down. Now we're gonna take that fly guard that's for the other side and then flip the zipper so that it is on the inside and line it up. Make sure the top of the zipper is correctly lined to the top of the fly so that the other side of your pants can line up properly. And then we're just gonna sew the zipper down to the middle of the fly. Then we're gonna sew the fly to the left pant leg with right sides together. Then pressing the seam allowance towards that fly and towards the zipper, we're gonna top stitch down that seam allowance. 
The front fly always seems super intimidating, but once you understand the basic concept of it, you're gonna fly through it every time you have to do this. You just have to remember the right and left side, which I struggle with, because it does differ between men and women. So with the zip pulled all the way up, we're just gonna finish the front crotch, starting from the end of the zipper all the way to the end, just making sure that you don't accidentally catch the zipper when you're trying to finish it off. Then you're just gonna pull the fly into the correct position, pin it if you have to, to keep it that way. So what we're gonna do next is draw the J shade that you often see on the front of the trousers. Mine's gonna be an inch wide. And once you have finished drawing out that shade, we're actually gonna start by sewing a line that's parallel to the front crotch seam at the bottom of the zipper just to secure it. Then you are going to sew the bottom of the curve and you wanna make sure that when you're doing this that you're sewing through every single layer of the zip guard and fly. After you have finished sewing the line that is perpendicular to the front crotch seat, you're gonna go ahead and unzip the fly and sew the rest of the J curve catching only the fly. This will help keep the fly in the correct shape. Here's how my front fly zip looks with an invisible zipper. As you can see, it works and it doesn't look any different. So if the only thing you have on hand is an invisible zipper, go ahead and just use that. Now we are gonna sew the back crotch seam together. The raw edges should have already been surged and then we're gonna line up the back crotch seam with the front crotch seam and sew the inner pant leg together. I like to sew starting from the middle of the crotch just to make sure that seam lines up. Now is the perfect time to put on these pants that you've been working so hard on and make any adjustments as you need. For me, I knew I definitely was gonna have to take it in at the waist, but I had to take it in about five inches and I couldn't do that only from the back seam because of the back pockets. So what I'm gonna do is take the five inches and divide it by six, because I'm also gonna take it out from the side seams. And as you can see, I just trued out to the original seam and then surged off the excess. And you can't even tell that I took in that much. And look how much better it fits. One thing to know is that if you are gonna be taking things in, make sure the back pockets is still lined up. Mine ended up being a little crooked, but I'm so happy with the fit so far. It's gonna fit even better with the waistband. And so we're gonna jump into that next. So for me, I did not add belt loops to my cargo pants because I never use them. But if you would like belt loops for your pants, refer to the written instructions. We're just gonna take our waistband pattern, the right and left pieces and join them together at the center back and press out those seams. I do like to do everything as flat as possible and with the least bulk. So I'm gonna go ahead and already sew the top of my facing waistband to the top of the lining waistband. Then we're just gonna press the seam allowance towards the lining and top stitch that down. Then you're gonna take your newly sewn waistband and measure it to the waist of your pants because remember we took in the waist of the pants that's so gonna be a lot smaller and you're gonna be able to trim some of the excess from the waistband. And you can do this by lining up the center back seam of the waistband to the center back seam of the pants. With right sides together, the waistband facing and the pants, we're just gonna sew it all the way around to connect the waistband to the pants itself. I also do start sewing from that center back seam because I really do want that seam to match up. And just so you guys know, I did end up having to take up about an inch from the top of the waistband to contour it better to my body. So you might have to um, account for that when you're adjusting the waistband. Once the waistband is sewn to the pants, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the ends of the waistband. And to do this, I'm gonna take the right sides of the waistband lining and facing and sew it down together at the end. As you can see, I have a lot of extra fabric because I did take in the waist of my pants. So I'm just gonna trim that off at the end and cut my 45 degree angle so that I can also flip it out sharper. Then we're gonna repeat this for the other side. You do want the waistband to be flush with the fly and zipper guard. So you're gonna sew a line that's parallel to the zipper guard and fly without actually catching it so that you can still turn the waistband inside out. Once it is right side out, the waistband, and that's because we're gonna finish the waistband by using a method called sewing in the ditch. So we're gonna take our waistband over to our ironing board and we're gonna press the seam allowance of the waistband up towards the top of the waist. And then with our waistband lining, we're gonna slightly fold it under to cover the waist seam. 
and you're gonna want to press this out all around as well as pin it because it's gonna make it easier for you to sew from the right side. Because the idea is that from the right side, you're gonna be sewing into the waist seam of the pants, making the stitch almost invisible. But by doing that, you're also hoping to catch the waistband lining and closing that up. So by pinning it and ironing it out, it's gonna help you do that. And with practice, you'll be able to execute this flawlessly. So no rush when you're doing this, just take your time and make sure you're going into that waist seam as much as possible. It's not the end of the world if you miss it. We're finally getting to the end guys. Now we're just gonna hem our pants. I surged the raw edges of each pant leg and then I did a one inch rollover hem and just straight stitched that all around. Again, for reference, I'm 5'3 and my inseam was 29 inches with the one inch hem that made the inseam 28 inches. Now we are gonna add the hook and loop to our waistband to finish it off. The loop and hook should line up with the zipper. We're just gonna hand sew that on, but just make sure it's really sturdy because it's gonna um, depend on how tight you make your waistband there might be a lot of stress on it and I just used a pin to mark the placement of my hook because you do want the hook and loop to line up properly and now you have a pair of cargo pants that you know will fit you perfectly and that you can flex that you may Thank you so much for choosing my pattern and watching my tutorial. I would love to hear what you guys want to see a pattern of next. And be sure to tag me so I can see what you guys made.